So until Mendel's work with peas in the middle of the 19th century, geneticists thought the traits in the offspring were a blend of the traits of the parents. And given the kind of morphological traits that they were looking at, it's easy to see how they might have come to that conclusion. Take height, for example. If two tall parents have a child, that child is likely to be tall. But if a tall person and a short person have a child, that child is likely to have height somewhere in the middle. And so Gregor Mendel's work pretty much single-handedly changed that view. And Mendel was obviously quite brilliant, but he was also quite lucky. The traits he studied were each caused by a single gene, yes, but they were also traits where one of the alleles masks the other in the heterozygote. For example, one of the traits he studied was seed shape. A single gene causes seeds to be round or wrinkled. And so he had plants that were true breeding round seeds, which means they were homozygote, uh, homozygous for the allele that causes round seeds. So they were round allele and a round allele. And he had a set of plants that were true breeding for the allele that causes wrinkled seeds, right? So they were one wrinkled allele and one wrinkled allele. However, when he took these two plants and he crossed them, he created a heterozygote with one round allele and one wrinkled allele. And while this homozygote resulted in round seeds and this homozygote resulted in wrinkled seeds, the heterozygote here resulted in round seeds, right? So we say that in this case, the round allele is dominant over the wrinkled allele because in the heterozygote, it's the round allele that shows up in the phenotype. Geneticists usually use a shorthand when they're writing this kind of genotype, uh, this kind of genotype analysis. They choose a single letter to represent the gene, and the uppercase letter is the dominant allele, while the lowercase letter is recessive. And so let's go ahead and choose W to represent this wrinkled gene. These plants will be big W, big W. These plants will be little w, little w, and these plants will be big w, little w. So there are two important points to keep in mind as we are moving forward. First, Mendel identified genes as elements of heredity that are passed from parents to offspring via certain rules, right? But now we know that these genes are sequences of DNA. Right? And that the different alleles of a particular gene differ in their base sequence, right? They differ in the sequence of that DNA. And so even though we discuss Mendelian genetics in this chapter in terms of morphological phenotypes, observable changes in organisms, don't forget that the molecular cause of these phenotypes is always a change in DNA sequence. And second, we need to recognize the role that chance plays. An organism cells contain two alleles of each gene, but which of those alleles ends up in a gamete is random. Most organisms produce many gametes over their lifetime, but which one ends up making a zygote is random. Chance events drive a huge amount of genetics, from random transmission of alleles, to random mutations, to random locations of crossing over in meiosis, right? And so in order to treat these topics quantitatively, we really do need to start with a firm understanding of the laws of probability.